Mr. Strano, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to host the Golf Kingdom. Good luck with this show. This message will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Starting now. 10, 9, 8, 4, Hey, three. hey, 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 what happened to 765? Just kidding. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. Kaboom. 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 It's going to be a great show. It's our, our Mission Impossible show, The Impossible Things of Golf. <coughs> That's what we're talking about. Let's bring in our show here. So <coughs> we've got Builder right off the bat, and then Pop Culture. I'm going to get the hack motion sensor on, and we're going to talk about how the hand works and how it might be impossible if you hit good golf shots because of what your hands are doing. Kiss segment, keep it simple, Strano, and then two on-course segments where I'm going to talk about impossible shots <coughs> of golf. Yeah, impossible things in the course. I'm going to help you make them possible. Then strategy, where I'm going to talk about, you know, are you doing th something with your encore strategy that maybe will help you get better? As always, we're going to close <coughs> with time to rise. Are you ready? While well, they call the medics, because it's it's time to build here in <coughs> the golf kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world. Here's your host, Rob Strano. Okay, as always, starting with the build it segment, and we're fun. We're in the parking lot, we're outside. We're gonna talk about a common error I see when it comes to getting the ball in the air. We're out in the fresh air, and we wanna get the ball in the air. We wanna fly it, because when we hit the ball, height equals carry, carry equals distance. So we wanna get the ball up in the air. The average tour player with a seven iron is hitting about 100 feet in the air. So when you think about 100 feet in the air, next time you're next to a really tall building, get 100 yards away from it, Look at the eighth floor window or door and go, I gotta hit it through there with a seven iron. Then you'll realize how high a tour player hits it. But here's the common error. I'm gonna show you the error and show you the fix and the drill to fix it. But the common error is when you swing, and we're gonna go wide on me here, when you swing, you go backwards trying to help the ball up in the air. So as you swing down, you go backwards trying to help it in the air. And what happens is the ball doesn't go in the air, it goes low. So watch here, so if I swing back, and I come and try to help it in the air and go backwards, the ball doesn't go in the air. Ooh, that was a loud swat. Huh, that ball really didn't go in the air, oops. So hit the side of the truck right there because I went backwards and I hit a low shot. Now, let's talk about the correct way to do that and the fix. So let me bring another ball in here. I mean, ooh, that's a, that's a pretty big dent. I, maybe we can fix that after the shoot, guys. We can try to fix that, but here's what we got. Now to fix the going backwards part. We don't want to be going backwards, like I said. We want to be going forward to hit the shot. Forward, getting on top of it, as they say in golf. I want to keep myself over the top of the ball, not be going backwards. Same as everything, if I throw a ball, I'm moving forwards, I'm not wandering backwards. Here's the drill we want to practice. It's called the over the top of the ball drill. So over the top in golf sometimes doesn't mean the right thing to do in the downswing. In this case, it is the right thing. We're gonna go over the top of the ball. You're gonna take four practice swings, and the fifth one, you're gonna go ahead and hit it. Here's what it'll look like. I'm gonna set up the swing, and I'm gonna lift the club above the ball. I'm gonna take practice swings over the top of the ball, moving forward. Here I am here, I'm going back, I'm moving forward. I'm going back, I'm moving forward over the ball. So I keep taking these swings back and forth, moving forward, not going back, moving forward, not going back. Then after I've felt that, I'm gonna take one last practice swing, come down and hit it without stopping. So I've done three in a row over the top of it. Now the last one, I'm gonna go forward to the top of it. I'm gonna come back down to the ball without stopping. I'm gonna hit it and go forward right over the top of it. I move forward, really high shot. You know what, I got it over the, got it over the car that time. I got the forward movement and that's what gets the ball in the air, coming forward on it trapping the ball, hitting down, gets the ball to go forward. So practice this over the top of the ball drill. Practice going forward, just like throwing a ball. You'll get the right move, you'll get the ball in the air, and hit the middle of the face more often. It's a great drill to practice at home, in the parking lot, or at the course when you're working on your game. It's our pop culture segment. That was Caddyshack, and the show is about impossible things. Yes, the Mission Impossible Things of Golf. 
one thing we're going to discuss is how the hand moves when you swing the club and how you might be making it impossible to get the club base back down and get it squared up at impact. I've got the hack motion sensor on here and as you can see on the screen and from the animation it's measuring how my hand mo moves, how I cock my wrist, how I bend my wrist. It's giving me all this data here. So a normal wrist, when I hinge the wrist and start off from neutral here, that's pretty neutral. I had it like one and one, but pretty neutral right there. A normal wrist action looks just simply like that. There's not a lot of movement. So when I do it, you see the ulnar and radial deviation comes out about 34. So it starts right around zero there. And when I just cock my wrist, I only get about 34, 35 out of it. So that means that when I swing down, I don't have to do a lot here. So the club's not moving around a bunch when I do this. When I simply do that, the club's not moving around a, a bunch. There we go, we're right at 45 there when I get a club in my hand. Now, when I come back down to impact, that means I've only got to do a little bit here. Here's where everybody messes it up. You not only change this number, but you change that one a lot. So it becomes mission impossible then, so watch. I'm going to grip the club here, I'm going to put it down here, and we're going to look at the numbers. So I'm going to get it as close to zero as I can. We're two and minus four there, so pretty neutral. So when I go back, if I cock my wrist right there, I get that 40 degree number. But what happens is you keep cocking your wrist, and when you do that, you cup your wrist that way. So it looks like this in your swing. And look at that number, it's 76 now, and I've lost the wrist cock. So in the downswing now, which is about three or four tenths of a second, it's that long. Boom, it's hardly any length. I've got to now move this back to zero in that amount of time. And that's where it becomes impossible by having too much hand action right there. I don't have enough time coming down to be aggressive and get it out. And if you're a slicer of the ball, this is your culprit right here. It's one of the things to look at on your video when you're taking it. Have a buddy zoom in in your hands. If you're doing this at the top, you've got to get this out and get that to flatten out and get that number right there closer to zero, but keep that number right there at a nice wrist hinge. If you get these numbers looking like that, two and 42 right there, you can come down and only do this to hit good solid shots. Remember, it's our pop culture segment. It's mission impossible. The hand, especially your lead hand, if you're doing too much of this, you don't have any time to get down there and get all this out and get the face square. So keep in mind, this thing and this thing, they match together when they move. You want to be careful that you're not doing too much hand action, therefore not being able to square the club coming down. Well, it's time for... Yes, your favorite, the KISS segment. Keep it simple, Strano. Something real simple for you to think to help your game. And nothing more simple than talking transition speed of the swing. And we're gonna use something simple that everybody out there has done. I bet you did it a lot when you were a little kid. You may even still do it as an adult, and that's swing on a swing. When you watch a kid swing on a swing, they kind of swing like this, don't they? Back and through at an even speed. And when they start down, it's a nice smooth transition from them swinging back to swinging down. We've even got a little video here of a kid on a swing. See, it's that same thing like I was doing with the club, back and through, back and through. The problem is when you swing a golf club, it's nothing like that. You're going back and you're throwing the kid off the swing and they're just kind of going shoo, 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 through the air or they're coming, they're going back nice and all of a sudden you're throwing them off the swing way off into who knows where. No, let's keep it simple. Mwah. Keep it simple, Strano. Simple tempo thought. Think about swinging this piece and this piece like it's the swing. Here's your kid in your swing right here. They're sitting on the club. This is the top where it hangs onto the pole and swings back and through. And you're gonna keep your tempo and keep the kid in the swing. You're gonna go back, keep him in the swing. You're not gonna throw him out of the swing into the ground coming down. I'd make for a funny video, but it sure would hurt. But you're gonna start down. You're gonna keep the kid in the swing and come through. Keep him in the swing as you come through and focus on hitting the middle of the face every time. It's a simple thought. Keep it simple, Strano. Go back here, start down, keep the kid in the swing all the way through the finish and you'll hit more solid shots. Stay tuned because we come back in the golf kingdom, we're going out on the golf course to show you something cool there. And we'll be back faster than one swing and one putt. Alexa, open golf kingdom. Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. 
Alexa, stop. If you want more pro pointers from me via your Amazon enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day I give you a new tip free with your Amazon enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host Rob Strano, every day. Jeez Louise Strano, what have you gotten yourself into here? Oh my gosh, let's get that out of the way and oh goodness, let's get some of this out of here so we, we, we can. Oh hey, hey, welcome on the course here in the Golf Kingdom. Um, we're talking about impossible situations and I, I seem to got myself into a pretty impossible situation here. I've hit it well off the course, well out of play and I gotta play a shot from here. I've gotta get it out from these trees and I, what usually happens is, is we don't know what to do so um, let's get rid of that. And I've got a shot here that I've gotta just kinda of get it back out and play. I don't have to hit it far but when I get in here to hit the shot and I go back, I've got these trees in my way if I hold the club normal. So I'm holding it normal. I'm just trying to pitch it out here and I got trees and stuff in my way. Well, the rules of golf don't say I have to hold the club on the grip. I can hold the club down here if I want to and make it as short as I want. But we seem to think that we hold the club on the grip so the farthest you can grip down is right here and well look, the trees are still in my way and if I'm banging these trees and breaking them, that's a penalty shot and we don't want that. So. Here's a little trick for the tour that you might learn that will help your game and some tour players don't even do this or know this but if I was actually going to play this shot and just pitch it over there, I'm going to grip way down here. Look how far down in the club I am. I'm way down here now. I got to get bent down because I'm really low and short in this club but look, I can swing this club back and I can't hit anything here. I can go up a little more. I'm not hitting any bushes or trees so I can theoretically take a little bigger swing, hit a little solid shot and just pitch it out over there. So. Here we go, I've got it gripped way down. I'm not gonna hit anything when I swing and I'm just gonna pitch it right out there. Hey, it's a pretty good shot. I got it clear out in the fairway and I just made a really short club, hit a little short shot and got myself out of this impossible situation. So sometimes it's mission impossible it seems in the golf course but if you understand you don't have to hold it here, you can hold it there. You know what, you can play these little shots out of here and have a shot right after that to hit maybe up on the green. But we're gonna come back in the course a little bit and see how I did and see where I got and show you another trick on how I'm playing these Mission Impossible shots. Okay, it's time for Just Hot Air, brought to you by our friends at Executive Air. Visit them for all your cooling, refrigeration, and heating needs. And Just Hot Air is always something that I share with you about the miss and misconceptions of golf. Yeah, the things maybe your buddies are telling you that aren't quite right, but you go, oh my gosh, it's gotta be that way. You've gotta know what you're talking about. I mean, you can shoot 95, you've gotta know everything about golf, but you know what? They're just maybe repeating something that they heard that's wrong also. I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna give you the right stuff. I'm gonna get rid of the myths. I'm gonna get rid of the misconceptions and we're gonna talk about ball position today. Because one thing I keep hearing when I ask my players is, you've got a seven iron in your hand where should that ball position be? And they go, always back of center. Or they'll say, well, I should have a ball position for every club, so I've got 13 clubs that I swing, so I should have 13 different ball positions. Let's tackle that myth and misconception first of 13 ball positions. So I've got 13 ball positions here. So this would be the farthest forward one, which would be my driver. This would be the farthest back one, which would be maybe my sand wedge or lob wedge. So 13 ball positions from front to back. Now let me grab my driver here. So here's where it gets interesting, right? Myth and misconception. There's my driver ball position. So if I set up in my driver stance, there's that ball position right there. You can see it up there towards my lead shoulder. This is the up, up ahead of the flat spot of my swing, which the low point is the left armpit. So I'm catching it on the upswing, but here's a problem. In my body width, my sand wedge will be outside of my trail foot. So if I grab a short club, like here's the seven iron, so sand wedge, pitching wedge, nine, eight, seven. That would be the seven iron ball position. So if I set up, there's driver right here, seven iron would be right there. Well, look where that is. That's way back. Sand wedge would be outside my back foot. So 13 ball positions, no way. That's got to be a myth. That's got to be a misconception. It's got to be what? Yeah, bad info from your buddies. We don't want 13 ball positions. We're gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna give you four. 
four simple ball positions. So we're going to get rid of the other nine. Get those out of there. We don't need those. We need four. Here's how you do it. Smack yourself on your lead cheek. I'm a right-handed player. Left cheek. That ball right there, short clubs. Middle clubs, the yellow ball is going to be through the logo in my shirt. My, my longer clubs, my hybrids, my long irons are going to be in my left armpit. And driver, like I said, will be up towards the crease of my shirt or the tip of my shoulder because that's past the low point. I'm catching it on the tee and sweeping it. So just hot air. 13 ball positions? No. Ball position back of center? No. Left cheek in front of center. Ball positions out in front. Get this right. The club face will have a chance to square. You'll hit better shots and probably get the ball in the air higher than you've ever hit it. Thanks for joining me in this Just Hot Air segment brought to you by our friends at Executive Air. Be sure to visit them for all their cooling, refrigeration, and heating needs. Well, let's get mental here. We're going to get deep inside your head with Cerebro. Yeah, I'm going to plug my earphone in so I can hear your brain waves. I can hear your thoughts. I got it. I'm connected with all of you out there. Let's talk mental game and let's specifically talk about when you practice. I want to get into your brain one key thought when you practice, and it centers around this word right here. Here you go. It's the word perfect. So here's my question for everybody out there. The word perfect. I want you to give me a word better than perfect. Go. Give me one. Oh, oh, oh. Wait. I hear you. Great. Hmm. Wait. There's another one. Awesome. Yeah. One more. Give me someone. Give me one more word. Oh, okay, there you go. Fantastic. So I got a couple words from you out there. Better than perfect, right? Those words, great, awesome, fantastic, are better than perfect. No, they're not. Perfect is perfect. When you hit a shot and you're practicing and you go, man, that was perfect. Don't try to do it better than perfect. You can't. Try and do it the same again. Don't try to hit it harder. Don't try to hit it farther. Don't try to hit it what? More perfect. You've done great, awesome, fantastic, but those aren't better than perfect. So listen to yourself when you hit one and it's, man, that was perfect. That was great. Coach would love that one if he saw it. Do it again. Because what happens is you show up to, to me for a lesson and you know I'm going to look for those perfect swings and you start doing them because you know I'm looking for that swing, what we're working on in your lessons. So perfect is perfect. Try to not make yourself mentally get tied in a knot by doing it better than something you can't do, which is perfect. Okay, welcome back here out on the golf course in the Golf Kingdom. And earlier you saw me hit an impossible shot or what appeared to be an impossible shot out from under the shrubs and the bushes and the tree limbs. Well, now here's where I ended up. I got it almost out, but I'm still sitting on this kind of pine straw leaves, bare spot area. And the question is, what club should I hit from here? Because I see a lot of players mess it up and they grab a really lofted club. When you've got pine straw and debris that you can't move, that really lofted club, it gives you a lot of club face and loft to get all that trash between the face. Whereas a little straighter faced club wouldn't get as much trash between the face. It wouldn't get as much pine straw and debris in there and you hit a cleaner shot. So what you're going to see is I'm going to hit two and I'm going to show you a close-up video of impact with the nine iron and the four iron and you're going to see a little deeper little pass through the ground with the nine iron because it's got more loft, more angle of attack, more hit down and you're going to see a lot more stuff get between the face. So I'll tell you what, let's hit the nine iron first. So I got a little shot here. I've got to move it down the fairway about, I don't know, about a hundred yards to get right in front of the green right here. That little shot right there. Now I'm going to hit it and you're going to see a pretty deep divot. You're going to see a lot of stuff get moved here and then you'll see the close-up view right afterwards. So here comes the shot. Boy, a lot deeper dig out of there. A lot of stuff came out. That ball went up high. It just nicked a limb. But here, look at that low view. Look at all the stuff that came out when I hit it. Yeah, we had a big deep gouge and a lot of trash came out. Now, come back to me here. We got the four iron in our hands. Now, four iron shot. It's going to fly a lot lower. I'm going to collect less between the face because it's a straighter face. So a little four iron right down the fairway. Same little swing right here, back here, waist high, waist through. The ball's going to come off nice and low. It's going to go pretty far because it's a four iron. And you're going to see a much cleaner pass through there. Very little moved because I didn't have a lot of face loft, a lot of angle to collect it as I came through. So 
when you get these impossible shots out of the rough. Remember, sometimes a straighter face helps you get cleaner contact and you can roll the ball where you've got to get it to go instead of taking something with lots of loft, trying to fly at the right distance and getting all that stuff between the face and you know what? Hitting it fat and not getting where you need to be. So hopefully this will help you with these impossible shots off these little debris filled lies. Time to get serious in the Golf Kingdom. It's our strategy segment. Because without a plan, there is no attack. Without attack, there is no victory. So we have to get serious about our on-course strategy, or we call it strategy here in the Golf Kingdom. We're going to look at a couple different holes, and we're going to discuss this. Do you keep doing the same thing on the same hole again and again and again? I've got two holes and two players that I've coached that have done this. And we've talked about different ways to get out of this kind of Groundhog Day thing where you're doing the same thing again and again on the same hole. We gotta kinda change our perspective and think about different ways to do it. Let's bring up the first hole here. So the first hole here is from my home course, Kelly Plantation in Destin, Florida. And it's our, it's our famous little double green hole. You can see we've got the double green over here where the 11th and the 7th hole. But for right now, we're focusing on the 7th hole. I had a player one time that no kid you, I'm no kid you, no kid me, whatever it is, no kidding. He would hit it in the middle of the fairway every time. And then from here, he would hit it all the way over here to the left of the green and he'd miss it left all the time and after the round he'd come up and he'd go on number seven I hit it over here left of the green again so we had to kind of come up with a plan or a strategy for defeating this little miss at left thing because he he could hit it in the fairway every time boom he'd hit it right here every single time he would then have like a full seven iron into the green and we came up with this strategy thought instead of getting here and having a full seven iron into the green again let's hit a little six iron and set a six iron and just run it up onto the green maybe you know hit it short let it roll on or hop on anything to not hit it down over here left of the green because he just hook it left of the green trying to keep it out of the water so we tried a little run up six iron you know what the next time he came to me he said you know what i hit the green today and i made birdie so sometimes change your approach on where you're you're looking to hit the shot and how you're looking to, to play it change the club now next view here we go this is the seventh hole of victoria national in indiana the 40th best club in america the thing is this is the seventh hole the t is over here okay and you play to this little narrow green everything above this green to the bunker here is trash it's waist high and i had a player that kept hitting it into the trash here and it was just a, it's just a little eight iron shot but he kept hitting it left of this bunker into the trash so he's hitting it and it's coming in there where we just are making bogeys and doubles all the time in this pro-am i said to him look if that's where you're going to hit it and you're going to hit it over there we're going to aim way over here we're going to aim way to the right of the green and then we're going to hopefully pull it a little bit and keep it on the green and that worked so that strategy of if you keep hitting in the same place you know let's aim a totally different direction Let's play for that left miss. Don't keep hitting it left of this bunker up here. Same thing, same on the previous. Don't keep hitting the same club into the green and making the same mistake. Hit one low, hit a different club, but do something different and get a different result and you find your strategy will improve and your scores will come down. Let's discuss in time to rise something everybody has. Yes, and sometimes these things you have seem impossible. And that's dreams. Dreams are great. Dreams in life, or maybe the dreams you have at night, sometimes are about impossible, crazy stuff. I know I have a reoccurring dream that I'm playing a golf tournament. And as I go to swing the club, I'm, I'm leading this tournament, and as I go to swing this club, I swing back, and all of a sudden, there's a wall in my way. And the wall just appeared out of nowhere. I'm leading the US Open, and I'm trying to finish off, and I'm set up, and I'm on the 17th hole, and I go back, and now there's a wall there and I can't swing and all of a sudden players are going through and they're finishing the tournament and they're giving someone else the trophy and I'm still trying to figure out how to swing around this wall. So dreams can be quirky, but we also need dreams to go after stuff. As a tour player, I had big dreams of playing in the Masters, winning the US Open, shooting course records, all those great rounds I dreamt about and sometimes I went and did those dreams. In life, I've got dreams about, gosh, I wanna have the house this way, or I want this to happen this way, or I wanna dream about taking this trip. Dreams are great. Embrace your dreams, have dreams, because if you can't dream them, then you can't go do them. So dreams are super important. Let's dream them big on the golf course and big in life, 
and then go after those dreams. That's what makes life an exciting adventure. Hopefully you learned about how to deal with those impossible things here in our Mission Impossible Golf Kingdom show. Let's recap stuff in our strand notes here. First thing we talked about was in the pop culture segment, I talked about the hand action and the wrist bend. Limit that hand action to hit better shots. Then we went on the course twice. Yes, in the first on-course segment, I talked about make the club sometimes as short as you can to hit those shots where things are in your way. You got bushes and trees in the way. You can choke down a lot to hit those shots. And then in the second on-course segment, I discussed how to pick the right club to do it. Pick a more straight-faced club for cleaner contact on those trashy lies. Now, for something from me every day, if you have an Alexa device, you can enable the Golf Kingdom skill and get a free tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. As always, if you've missed Golf Kingdom stuff, download the Golf Kingdom app. Yeah, there's all the shows there, all the segments there, and a daily little tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. Thanks for joining me here in the Golf Kingdom.